Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is address a seemingly widespread misconception. People keep telling me how they don't want air to go under their car, and that's been out of date for 10 years, 15 years, even 20 years. And if you look at cars like Porsche and Citroen, it's been outdated for more like 50 years. So let's take a look, because for low drag and low lift, we want air to go under the car. Now, where did this idea come about and how was it relevant back 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago? Well, if we look at the underside of this Volvo, we can see something very, very clearly. Old cars had incredibly rough undersides and the Volvo is a wonderful example of that. Look from the front, we can see the front suspension hanging out in the breeze. We can see the cross member out in the breeze. We can see the sump and even as we start going towards the back of the car, we can see the exhaust pipe hanging down beneath the floor. We can see the rear suspension. We can see lots and lots of surface roughness. It's as rough as cars were on their top surfaces in the 1920s. If you look at a Model T Ford, it had this sort of surface roughness. Now, obviously on the top surfaces, it had become much smoother, but underneath the car, nothing had been done. And if you let air flow under those sorts of cars, then you create problems. You create high drag and you create lift which is why old cars used to have deep front spoilers fitted to them. Here's one, an aftermarket one, and here's a factory one on a Volvo of just a little bit later than the one we saw a moment ago. So they tried to stop air getting under the car because the undersides of the car were so incredibly rough. But that has not been the case for good aerodynamic cars of at least the last decade, and as I said, in some cases, more like 50 years. So look at this Tesla Model S. Look underneath the car. Look how smooth it is. Look how almost nothing is hanging out in the breeze. But it's not just something like a Tesla. Let's go back a decade to the 2010 Prius, drag coefficient just 0.25, and let's look under the car. Under the front of the car, look at the under tray. Now you can see there's lots of dimples and pressed shapes. They're largely just to stiffen the plastic panel. The air would simply flow across all of this front under tray quite smoothly. Let's go to the middle of that Prius. Here you can see the exhaust is exposed, but unlike the Volvo, it's actually tucked up uh, in a tunnel, so it's not hanging down below the floor. And each side of there, you can see smooth under trays. The exhaust isn't covered because it needs to be cooled. If we go to the back of the Prius, we can see there's a rear diffuser, and even the beam axle is tucked up behind the fuel tank, which also has a flat surface. So an enormous amount of attention being paid to undercar airflow. And it's not just cars like a Prius. Let's have a look at an Audi A4 Avant, a station wagon, 2016. Look at that underneath, starting at the front, completely covered across under the engine bay. Again, the exhaust is open, but look at the width of those side under trays in the middle of the car. Look again, even here, the muffler forms an aerodynamic surface with its lower part to keep attach flow all the way under the car. 2018 Alpine 110, an extraordinary good car underneath. Let's take a look. Starting at the front of the car here on the right, this is a mid-engine car, so it can even cover effectively the exhaust pipe, beautifully smooth under trays right across, and then a rear diffuser even with strakes, longitudinal strakes in that rear diffuser. Now, it's not just old cars, you can achieve just the same thing. I'm not sure it's not just new cars, you can achieve just the same thing with old cars. 2000 Honda Insight, one of my cars, 20 years old now, and quite rough underneath as standard. But look, here I've added, here's the rear under tray, which incorporates the diffuser. There are the standard middle under trays, and at the front, a full under tray, which I have added. Now, what is the result of that? The result of that is, as these arrows show, it develops downforce. The air flowing under that car is squeezed between the smooth under tray and the road. Therefore, it travels fast against those smooth surfaces, 
faster flow equals lower pressure. Lower pressure means less lift, or in the case of this car, actually even downforce. Now, you need a smooth underfloor to achieve that, but if you have a smooth underfloor, either provided as standard by the factory or added by you, you want as much air as you can to go under the car to develop that high speed, uh, low pressure, and of course, you have less air then going over the top surface of the car, airflow over the top surface of the car almost always creates lift so you have a double benefit and of course it's also good for drag so this idea of oh fit a front splitter stop air getting under the car fit a front spoiler these ideas are out of date by decades decades you do not want to take that approach instead you want to smooth the underside of the car and get all of those benefits and here are some other people who've done just that on more old cars, here's a Passat wagon, here's an off-road truck. Stopping air going under the car is a positive only, only if you haven't optimized the underside and why wouldn't you when it's so easy and the benefits are so great. Lots more in the book on under trays and under car airflow, modifying the aerodynamics of your road car. It's out now and available from all booksellers, including Amazon. Thank you.